Hi everybody, this is Peter Schiff. It is Wednesday, January 2nd, 2013. Well, Congress got together just the way I said they would, and they came to an 11th hour deal to avert uh, the so-called fiscal cliff. And in so doing, they sold us down the river. I said from day one that this was going to happen, that Congress and the President would come together to save us from this phony crisis of their creation and would then take credit uh, for putting politics aside and doing something in the best interest of the country. This is not in the best interest of the country. They have done the worst possible thing. And of course, how did I know Congress would do that? Because when given the choice, they will always do the worst possible thing for the country because they don't care about the country. This is purely political. And what should really bother you is that we're almost two years from the next election. Yet the only thing on the minds of our leaders is how to get reelected. Well, if they can't do something right when we're as far away from an election as we're ever going to be, what hope is there that we're ever going to do the right thing? And that is the real message that's going to be sent around the world that America will be fiscally irresponsible in perpetuity until it can't do it anymore because there is a crisis imposed upon this country from abroad, just like the crisis imposed upon Greece. And that day of reckoning is coming. That's a fiscal cliff that we can't avoid with legislation. We're going to have to deal with it, and it's going to be far more ominous than what they think we avoided. In fact, if you remember when S&P downgraded U.S. Treasuries, Moody's didn't do it. And if I recall, the reason that Moody's gave for not downgrading us was that we had come to a deal. We had agreed on future spending cuts that were going to kick in right now. Or Jan you know, they were supposed to kick in January 1st. Now, back then, I said those spending cuts will never happen that though deficit reductions will never kick in. Back then, I knew what Moody's didn't know or didn't have the guts to admit was that our politicians were all talk and no action. The only reason those spending cuts were there was because they didn't actually happen. It was a promise for the future that they knew they were going to break. And of course, I was right again about that because as soon as we came to the point where those cuts were going to kick in, Congress canceled them. So if Moody's has any integrity, which of course they probably don't, so it, it, it's not really an if, but if they did, well then they would have to downgrade the U.S. Treasury debt right now. But even if they don't have the integrity to do it, the world will downgrade U.S. debt because the world is going to appreciate the situation that we will never come to terms with our deficit. In fact, when you hear the president talking in Congress about this deal, Somehow they talk about being responsible about the debt. This, this deal blows a hole in an already enormous deficit. I mean, think about the situation of a family where, let's say, you know, you're, you're running a personal deficit. You got a job, but you're spending a lot more than you're earning. You've been living off of credit cards, but you have this big problem because your revenues exceed your income. What do you do? Well, you got two choices. You got to cut back on your spending or get a second job so you have more revenue, but you got to bring uh, your personal finances in the line. But what did we do? Well, in my example, it's like the guy decides to buy a new car and then quit his job. I mean, he does everything backwards. How can we have tax cuts for anybody when we have a huge deficit? In fact, if you listen to what the president said and Congress, they saved Americans middle class, because that's what they care about. That's where the votes are. They claim that they saved the middle class from the pain of a tax hike. They didn't save the middle class from anything. The pain is still going to be there. Whether they, whether they realize it or not, the pain is coming. In fact, it's going to be more excruciating. If the president and Congress want to save Americans from the pain of higher taxes, then they got to cut spending. But this compromise deal, not only does it cancel the cuts, it increases spending. We're increasing spending when we're already broke and have a big deficit. Now, yes, taxes are going up on a small portion of Americans, but overall, taxes are actually going down because the government is canceling tax increases on most people that was already in the budget. 
Better than 98% of Americans are going to pay lower taxes in 2013 than what they were scheduled to pay. So we got less revenue coming into government. We got more spending. We're going to have bigger deficits. Now, the, the largest budget deficit we ever had, I think, was in 2009 when it was about $1.4 trillion or so. Now, this year is, is supposed to be lower than that. Who knows? But I think before Obama leaves office, maybe way before, maybe early on, we're going we're gonna to beat that record. We're going to have a $1.5 trillion deficit. We may even have a $2 trillion deficit relatively soon because the tax increases that they have on the rich might actually backfire. You know, a lot of Americans now, myself included, are in the 50% tax bracket. You live out in California, you live in New York, better than 50% of your income is going to the government. Now, what kind of incentive is that? I hear a lot of talk out there about, well, maybe rich people are going to spend a little less if, uh, because they have the higher taxes. I'm not worried about rich people spending money. I'm worried about their savings and their investment because that's where these higher taxes come from. The rich are simply going to send money to Washington that they otherwise would have used to grow their own businesses or to invest in helping somebody else grow their business. So what's the result of the entrepreneurs, the investors sending more money to Washington? We have slower economic growth, we produce less, and we create fewer jobs. That's the result of these tax hikes. If we were going to get tax hikes at all, we needed them to hit the middle class. It had to hit consumption. We needed maybe a national sales tax. The truth of the matter is the president and Congress want to go on peddling a free lunch. They want America to believe that you can have all this government and it doesn't cost anything. That, well, we'll just make the rich pay for it. Well, you know what? Big government is expensive. And regardless of what the president and Congress say, Americans are going to feel the pain one way or another. Because the spending doesn't stop. The government is spending a tremendous amount of money and the middle class are going to have to foot the bill. Now, how? Right? The president and Congress say, well, we're not going to raise your income taxes. Well, then how are we going to pay for all this government? Because government's getting more expensive. It's not the rich. Remember, they might actually pay less taxes. They might not work as hard. They might not invest enough as much. What's going to happen? Inflation. The inflation tax is going to hit every American. You know, they, they, they took entitlements off the table, right? They said, we're not going to make any cuts to Social Security. We're not going to make any cuts to Medicare. They're taking a meat hook to those programs because they're going to reduce the value of the money that Social Security recipients get, that Medicare recipients get. They're going to destroy the value of everybody's paycheck. So in other words, they're not going to take more taxes out of your pay. They're going to take the purchasing power out of your money. So when you cash your paycheck and you go to the supermarket or you go to the grocery store, you're not going to be able to buy very much. And the big increase in prices that are coming, and I don't care what Alan Greenspan says or Ben Bernanke, rather, says, you know, he's, already, he's actually said he doesn't care. He doesn't care what happens to food prices. He doesn't care what happens to oil prices. But Americans are going to see their standard of living shrink. That's the cliff. We're going over the currency cliff. They threw the dollar over the currency cliff to avoid the fiscal cliff because we still have to pay for government one way or another. And so what's going to happen is the deficits are going to be bigger than ever and we're going to have to print money. The Federal Reserve is going to print money and monetize all his debt. Yeah, Ben Bernanke pretends he's not monetizing it, but that's what he's doing. He's taking the debt and he's turning it into money. And when he turns debt into money, he destroys the value of the money that's already out there. He destroys the value of your savings account, of the cash value in your life insurance, of your annuity. He destroys the real purchasing power of pensions, of wages. This is going to hit the middle class, and it's going to hit the middle class hard. These guys are patting themselves on their backs as if they've done a good thing. If they really cared about the middle class, they would shrink government. They would slash government spending and let the middle class off the hook. Instead, they're not doing that. And the real thing that, that, that's got to that's bother you is the politics of it. You know, the president ran promising all this government, saying that, well, we're going to steal from the rich, the rich are going to pay for it. There's not enough rich people, and the unintended consequences of confiscatory taxes means that you destroy not only the capacity of the rich to invest, but the initiative, the incentive. And, of course, President Obama said he's not even finished. No sooner had the ink dried on this plan that he was given a press conference saying that we're going to tax the rich even more. We've got to make the rich pay their fair share. Well, 50%, that's not their fair share. We need to take more than half. You know, medieval serfs, I say this all the time, medieval serfs were paying 25% of what they produced to the Lord, and they were considered serfs. 
that was living in, in, in serfdom was because your lord, you know, took 25% of what you produced. And that defined a serf. You know, I, I live for the day where I can be elevated to achieve the high status of a serf. Because I would have to have my taxes cut in half to be living a good life like a serf, right? Gee, what, 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 if, I, what if I could be have a lord that let me keep 75% of what I earned? Because the my lord, the U.S. government, only lets me keep half. And that's, I don't even get half because, of course, i got to pay sales taxes. i got to pay property taxes. So I get less than half. Yet Obama wants more. This is just a down payment. He wants to come out and tax more. Where is the cliff coming? Where is the real fiscal cliff? It's when the world recognizes this, right? The world is going to look at this and they're going to say, wait a minute, America promised future spending cuts and when the future became the present, we canceled everything that we promised to do, right? We kicked the can down the road and then when we got to the can, we kicked it again. Now, how dumb is the world going to be? How much money are foreign governments and foreign individuals going to lend Americans when they know that we're never going to pay it back. Yeah, we'll play lip service. We'll talk about cutting the deficit, but we'll never actually do it. You know, there is now a, a battle now to lift the debt ceiling coming up in a couple of months. The Republicans are going to cave. They're going to raise the debt ceiling. Obama's out there saying we have to raise the debt ceiling because we have to pay our bills. <laughs> it's the opposite. We want to raise the debt ceiling because we don't want to pay our bills. We want to borrow money instead of paying our bills. The way you pay your bills is you don't raise the debt ceiling and you actually pay the bills. He doesn't want to pay the bills. He wants to hide from the American public the enormity of these bills. Nobody wants to tell the public how much big government costs. Everyone wants to pretend it's free. So we raise the debt ceiling so we keep on borrowing money. But we're not borrowing anything because the word borrow implies that you're going to pay it back. Well, how are we ever going to pay it back? We can't. It's impossible. All we'll do is borrow more money because we can't pay back any of the money we've already borrowed. That is the sad truth. This is a giant Ponzi scheme, and we're ringing a bell. We're ringing a bell. Now, we got a little bit of a reprieve because of Japan. You know, the dollar is getting clobbered right now. Yeah, the stock market's up more than 200 points today. Everybody is celebrating that we didn't go over the cliff. But look at the dollar. Dollar's getting clobbered, except against the yen. In fact, I'll talk about that in a minute. But dollar's getting clobbered. Look at gold up about 20 bucks. Look at oil. Oil price is up almost $2 a barrel, about $94 on crude. That's going higher. So it's not just the, dollar going, the market going up. The, the markets are giving the thumb down. The treasury market is getting beat up too today. We'll see if that is a turn. Because those are the real bubbles that are going to burst. The bubble in the U.S. treasury market and the bubble in the U.S. dollar. Because when the world realizes, hey, this is all talk. Right? We made a deal, and then the minute we had to comply with it, we undid it for politics. And again, we're two years away from an election, which is the furthest we're ever going to be from an election. So we will never do what's right. And when our creditors realize that, that's it. They're going to sell dollars. And last year, we, we got a break because people thought that the problems in Europe were bigger than the problems in America. Well, they thought wrong. But temporarily, that took the pressure off the dollar. Well, you know, the euro's been rising. We're back up at maybe 133. I think the euro looks very strong. Look at the British pound breaking out. We're even weak against the pound. That's how pathetic the dollar is. Look at the Aussie dollar. Look at the Canadian dollar. Currencies are moving up now. The only thing that's saving us is the yen. And this is just a temporary reprieve. Because you got, you know, they, had, they just had an election in Japan. And I guess the outcome of the election proved that Americans don't have a monopoly on stupidity because the Japanese actually voted for more inflation. They voted for a government that promised to debase the yen. And it's already dropped dramatically uh, just leading up to the election. But what does that mean for the Japanese? That means lots of inflation. you got a lot of people, savers in Japan. You know, they think that deflation is the enemy. De deflation is the one thing they had going for them. In fact, they didn't even have that. If you look at prices in Japan over the last year, they're flat. They're stable. What's wrong with price stability? That's what central banks used to want. But now they're saying that's not good enough. They need 2% inflation. As if the difference between prosperity and recession is two percentage points in inflation. But of course, it's not inflation isn't like an oven, like you turn the temperature up and you can set the inflation rate. They're going to have much more inflation than that. What do you see what's going to happen to prices in Japan? The Japanese are going to get a big taste of inflation, and they're not going to like it. And of course, they got a lot of bonds that they're going to have to sell. 
And so this is going to put a lot of money around the world. That's why, you know, I, I think the Japanese are going to be investing in gold. They're going to be investing in emerging markets. I don't think they want any more treasuries, but they're going to be investing and they're going to be spending more money. But prices are going to be rising in Japan. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Bank of Japan because they're already expanding, expanding the money supply. They're going to have to print even more yen to buy up all these JGBs. That might not mean that they can buy as many U.S. treasuries. The Europeans, they're going to start selling treasuries. The, the European crisis is diffused now. People aren't going to be worried about the European debts. They're puny compared to the American debt. And we've just said, look, we've got carte blanche to print as much money as we want. Why, why did Europe have to make some reforms? Because there was some pressure on those European countries. There is no pressure on America. There will be eventually. But right now there's none. If the world is worried about American debt, they've got to do something about it. They've got to refuse to buy it. They've got to start selling their dollars. Because the only thing that's going to force U.S. politicians to do the right thing is going to be the pain. Right? So what's going to have to happen? There's got to be a consequence to the American economy of huge deficits. And what are the consequences going to be? The first one is going to be rising prices. Americans are going to feel the cost of these deficits when they buy gas, when they buy food, when they buy everything. Americans are going to be poorer. But what's really going to do it is going to be when it hits the Treasury market. I think it's going to hit the foreign exchange markets first, consumer prices second, and then interest rates third. It's going to start pushing up long-term interest rates, and it's going to make the cost of funding these debts impossible to deal with. And then we're going to be steer staring at a real cliff. And this is nothing. They're not going to be able to avoid this without any pain. It's going to take dramatic pain. They're, and so what, what form is uh, this pain going to take? What's going to happen as a result of this? Well, I don't know. You know, Again, I don't know if the rating agencies are going to do what they should and, and downgrade our credit. But the world is going to figure this out. You know, I've overestimated the intelligence of the global community uh, to figure out what's the game that we're playing here in America. They've played it for a long time, but they've got to be tiring of it. And we're sending this message loud and clear to the world that we're, we're just going to borrow and spend as much money as the world is dumb enough to lend us. And again, they're not lending us anything. They think they're lending. But if we can't pay it back, they're giving. And the world's not that charitable. They don't want to keep giving Americans money so they can keep spending, keep buying things they can't afford, so that our leaders can keep getting reelected by making promises that we can't keep and setting the bill for our profligacy uh, to the rest of the world. So this is going to begin to unravel. And as I said, we've got this debt ceiling debate. We're going to cave. We're going to raise the debt ceiling. That is the irresponsible, reckless thing to do. Despite what the government is going to say, it is not responsible. The responsible thing is don't raise the debt ceiling. But that's not what our leaders are going to do. It's going to be an Orwellian doublespeak. They're going to, they're going to do the most reckless thing they can do while claiming uh, they're acting responsibly. They're going to claim that they're paying our bills by going deeper into debt. When you pay your bills, your bills go away. You don't, you don't pay your bills by augmenting them. When you raise the debt ceiling, the bills pile up. All the unpaid bills just pile up because we haven't paid anything. Right? You don't pay your visa with your MasterCard. You pay your visa by writing a check. But they don't want to write a check. They don't want to ask Americans to pay for all this government. Because you know what? If Americans knew how expensive government was, they wouldn't want it. The reason there's not a big public outcry for, outcry for spending cuts is because they're being insulated from the pain. A lot of Americans aren't even paying any income taxes. What, 47% of Americans pay no income taxes. What do they care how high income taxes are? They don't think they're paying. What do they care what government spends? Somebody else is getting a bill. Well, the President and Congress, they don't want Americans to know how much this costs. And you know what? When prices start to rise, of course, they're going to deny it. They're going to say that there is no inflation, right? They're going to try to, they're not going to hear the cries of Americans who are dealing with the consequence of these deficits. They're going to claim that there's no inflation. And then when it gets so agonizing, so excruciatingly painful, they're going to blame somebody else. They'll blame OPEC. They'll blame speculators. They'll blame the weather. Who knows what they're going to do? They're going to blame everybody but themselves. They're not going to look in the mirror to see the culprits in this inflation. They're just going to blame, they'll, maybe they'll blame us. They'll say it's our fault. We're consuming too much. Well, they want us to consume. Isn't that the whole idea? They want Americans buying stuff, whether we can afford it or not. The world is going to figure it out. 
the dollar is going to be under pressure. I said, look, the European crisis, I don't think it's over for good, but it's probably over for now because our crisis is worse. They're dealing with their problems, not as effectively as they should. Again, we don't have a monopoly on bad politicians. you got plenty of them in Europe. But we got a worse problem here, and we've been getting away with it for longer, and we're less disciplined. Right? We're like a bunch of school children without a teacher or in the room. Or so, we're just running around. We're like, you know, we're just going to run wild until somebody reigns us in. Because our, our own politicians aren't going to do it. So we're going to have this crisis. The dollar is the reserve currency for now. It's not going to be the reserve currency forever. Not if we're going to run deficits forever. How can the dollar be the reserve? How can we be the anchor of the world's monetary system when we're sinking? And our creditors are figuring this out. So the dollar is going to take a big hit. It's just starting today. And I think the only thing that, that, that's propped us up a little bit is the yen. But the yen is probably going to start to rise against the dollar too. It's going to sink against other currencies. But it's, not going, to, it's going to have to start to rise against the dollar because the dollar is going to be that weak across the board. And it's not just in terms of currencies. It's in terms of real things. You know, I was on CNBC the other day, and their senior economist, Steve Leisman, by the way, we put up a video of that uh, CNBC on this uh, YouTube channel. But, I, I, you know, I, I basically pointed out that the dollar has been devaluing for decades. And he said, no. He said, the dollar is not going down. What is he talking about? The dollar is going down. Look at what a dollar buys. The dollar has lost a tremendous percentage of its purchasing power over the last decade, over the past 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 100 years, you name the time period, the dollar is losing value. But it's about to lose a lot more value a lot more quickly because we're going to have to run them off the printing presses a lot faster thanks to this deal that they're all congratulating themselves for where they sold us down the river to avoid this so-called cliff. And now the rate of dollar depreciation is going to accelerate. And we're not going to be able to count on foreigners to prop them up. They're not going to absorb all these dollars. They're not going to buy up all these treasuries. Especially now, since it's out of the bag, we've come clean, we can't really maintain the pretense of deficit reduction. I mean, they're going to try, but is anybody going to believe them? How could anybody be so dumb as to believe a U.S. politician who says he's going to cut the deficit? We just had an opportunity to do it, and we didn't do it. Because they don't have the integrity to do it. They will always take the easy way out, which is exactly what they did. And as long as interest rates stay low... As long as the world is, is lending us money and holding our dollars, why should we ever do the right thing? Which means we will do the wrong thing until we can't. Now, some people might argue and say, well, we can do it for another five or ten years. I doubt it. There is no way we can borrow that money. We're going to be running one and a half to two trillion dollar a year deficits very shortly. And then they're going to get bigger than that as more and more people from the baby boom retire and more and more people take disability. And the, the, the labor force participation rate is going to keep on shrinking. More and more people are going to jump into the, into the wagon and fewer people are going to be left pulling it. And we're going to be relying on China or Japan or Saudi Arabia to pick up the slack. They're not going to want to do it. They can't do it. And so we're going to deal with it. And people say, hey, you know, we're leaving these debts to our children. No, we're not. Our children aren't going to pay these debts. We're going to pay these debts right now. As I said, this is going to be a gigantic tax increase. That's what this bill is. It's a gigantic increase in the inflation tax. Government gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're going to pay for that cost by debasing the currency, and that is a tax. They might want to deny it's a tax, but it's going to feel like a tax. It's going to feel like a very painful tax because it's taxing our purchasing power. Is there a difference if more money comes out of your paycheck or you need more money to buy food, to buy energy? It's going to feel like your taxes went up right? when everything costs more. But the politicians won't claim responsibility. But eventually there'll be no choice because we will be staring at a currency crisis. This is not going to be just a, a small decline. This is going to be a precipitous decline as the dollar goes over a currency cliff and takes the bond market with it. And it's not, again, this is not going to happen years and years down the road. This is going to happen soon. This is a bigger crisis than 2008. In fact, 2008 is going to look like roaring 20s compared to what's going to happen when we go over the real cliff. This is a cliff that they pushed us over when they spared us from this phony cliff. Because again, this fiscal cliff was not the problem. It was a consequence of the problem. It was paying the piper. But the problem was we weren't paying the full bill. The cliff wasn't actually big enough. We needed a bigger fiscal cliff. And it needed to have real government spending cuts. And absent government spending cuts, 
We have to pay for all the government with higher taxes on the middle class. We didn't have a big enough cliff, but believe me, we're going over the Grand Canyon. We're going over the mother of all cliffs, and they can't save us from us. Anyway, that's it for today. Don't forget, I'm going to be talking about this topic all week on my radio show. We had some problems today, so I couldn't come back. We've been off for over a week for the New Year's holiday. But don't forget, shiftradio.com. You can see the URL up above my shoulder. But shiftradio.com, I do the show normally 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time. Uh, you can listen live or you can listen delayed. And again, don't forget, check out uh, more of these videos on the Shift Report. Bye for now and Happy New Year.